Hello and welcome back to the TT Lock-In Fueled by Monster Energy. Today would have marked the start of the first of the two Supersport races over on the island, as well as the RL360 Superstock race. But never fear, we have plenty of action to come tonight. And just listen to that superbike scream. We have day number two of the virtual TT powered by Moto. We have another TT lock-in live where Steve Plater and myself will be joined by Cameron Donald and Clive Paget. But first, we're heading back into the archives, all the way back to 2012, as we revisit one of the closest races in TT history. This is the Ultimate TT Races, presented by Bennett. Ultimate TT race presented by Bennett is a cracker. It's all the way back in 2012. It's the first super sport race, and this is how practice looked. And there is confirmation of where we're at at the moment. The Dunlop domination at the top. William, who's not won around here. Michael Dunlop, two wins to his credit. Bruce Anstey has won here eight times. Gary Johnson won. Sky Martin, not yet. And of course, John McGuinness with 17 wins. Never discount him. Well, one man will be looking at this race with great interest because Sir Jackie Stewart, it's your first TT. I can't believe that. It is indeed. I've seen it on television. I've seen it in films. I saw that great movie, uh, Close to the Edge. Uh, and that's what brought me here. I was so excited by it and never... I came to the... Isle of Man with my brother when I was very young, way back, and there was road racing then, and he was driving a C-Type Jaguar, and Sterling Moss was racing, and a lot of other people. So it's not new to me, but this is this is man's country. This. Well, there you go. There are the thoughts of Sir Jackie Stewart. Let's get the thoughts of some of the riders before they head off to Embray Hill. Gary Johnson, not much time to go now. How are you feeling about this Super Sport race? Yeah, feeling really good, James. Uh, you know, we changed the engine uh, for the last practice, and uh, although it fried the clutch, you know, we had a problem there, but the engine was real strong. So uh, I'm real, you know, I'm buzzing for the race. Hopefully, uh, things come together, had a bit of luck on side, like we did last year, and uh, get a good result. It couldn't get a lot better than this for you. Look at this blue sky, it's just magnificent. Crowds out, it's going to be a fantastic race. I think this one uh, could be a bit of a close one, so it could be for a bit of an hour biter here. Well, you provided quite a close one on Saturday, but we reckon that this bike is going to give you, possibly, going into it, your best chance of a win. Yeah, no, I think I'm looking good. My teammates are also very quick on this, so he could be my biggest threat. We'll see, but uh, haven't done as many laps I would have liked to this week on it. But that's OK. We're out there. I'm comfortable on this bike. So um, let's just get on with the job. Yeah, super, super sport bike. If I rode as hard as I did at the North West, I don't think it would be a million miles away. You know, we had a good, strong ride there. Bikes are competitive. It's something I'm really familiar with. I love riding with Clive. Padgett and the family, so uh, yeah, we're just gonna. It, it's one of those races. It's wide open, you know. It's gonna be a lot closer, and it's a little bit hard and a little bit tougher on the little bike. It's gonna rev them to death. So uh, we'll have to just see what see what happens, see where we end up in the race. But I'm looking forward to it. They're a great little bike to ride. So, hi Bruce. Uh, good good ride on Saturday. Can uh, improve on that one. Yeah, definitely. Got to get going in those first two laps. That was the problem on the super bike. I just didn't get into a rhythm. Didn't get going. The last four laps, I got up to speed. So this one is. Uh, Got to go from the word go, just head down. And If you had to choose, you prefer the super sport bike? Yeah, so I always love the super bike. So much, uh, sorry, 600, it's so nice to ride. It's more like riding a 250 around here. It's all about corner speed, getting the corner speed out, out onto the straight. So always good fun to ride. Now, you might know someone with two left feet, but two left hands, I don't think so. It's good to know even the great John McGuinness doesn't always get everything right. Yes, needing another glove. Someone handed him a replacement, but the wrong colour. And the fashion-conscious John wasn't having that. In times of crisis, run to the woman who knows best, his wife, Becky. And there you go. No problem, John. I'll sort it And so she did. Keith Amor was dispatched to the paddock. And with new glove in hand, he ran back, crisis averted, and John was ready to go. 
so four laps of the mountain course awaiting us 150.92 miles is the distance the winner last year Bruce Anstey on the Honda and there is John McGuinness and people tend to write off John's chances on a 600 but don't forget he's won twice on 600 machines here and set lap records as we come into the final countdown towards the start of the race the flag drops and we are away racing and it's Philip McCallum who's set us in motion as well 11 times TT winner doing the official duties of starter and there goes John McGuinness away under the footbridge and now it's Ryan Farquhar and good to see Ryan back here after being forced to sit out the whole of the TT apart from the senior race last year after a crash in practice Ryan is two is away and here's number three Guy Martin Five podiums in super sport races here at the TT for Guy Martin on the Tyco Suzuki. Next up is number four, Cameron Donald. Looking very determined on the first of the Wilson Craig Hondas. Second place on Saturday for Cameron. And now last year's winner, here comes Bruce. From then just lifting a couple of times as he goes down Glen Crutchley Road in front of us here. Bruce, a winner last year, his eighth TT win. This is Cameron Dondo straining through the bottom of Bray Hill. He's another one. Just, you just never know if he's on form, he can win. He's been talking about retiring, but he's riding extremely well. Another one had a good Northwest 200. He seems very happy with the Wilson Craig team. He does. That's McGuinness, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, that is McGuinness. Yeah, yeah that's yeah, it. And that's going on towards Glenvan. I think you'll actually see the camps on the left. Yep. One coming up to pause Balascari, of course we've named it, but there we go, Michael Dunlop, lap record holder. What can he do today over the top of those? He's well close to those curves as he charges down, of course, the R6 Yamaha. He switched from the Suzuki. He's close to that other curve as well, Steve. Oh, absolutely nailed in the bottom there. Yeah. This is uh, Ian Hutchinson. And I don't think that's that will be Gary Johnson, Johnson yeah. and, and he's, he's already catching Hutchinson. He is, yeah, yep. Gary Johnson catching, and, uh, of course, he was the winner of uh, last year, the Super Sport class. This is uh, Guy Martin on the JSXR 600. That's Cronky Body Straight. We're riding with Guy Martin now. I'm not sure if that sounds it right. Do, it just doesn't, and it doesn't look quick to me, I've got to say. Still, what sort of luck's he having issues there with Guy Martin already? Yep, drink waters. Good crowds, look at them, basking in the sunshine. You can see, yeah, he's being caught easy, He is, definitely. It? That's Cam Donald, he should be on the Wilson Craig Honda, and that's not 10 seconds, Steve. No, not at all. Leaderboard then looks like this. Michael Dunlop leads William Dunlop by a quarter of a second. In third place, Gary Johnson, who is one and a half seconds down on William Dunlop. In fourth, number four, Cameron Donald, who is 0.6 of a second down on Johnson. In fifth, number five, Bruce Anstey, who is a fifth of a second down on Donald. And in sixth place, Ryan Farquhar, who is half a second back on Anstey. We're on board with Gary Johnson looking back now. Yep. This is a rear facing from uh, Gary Johnson's Lynx lifting CBR 600. That's going on to Kronke Vore. Used to be bumpy in my day, smoothed out a great deal. And there he is passing Hutchie, number six on the Swan Yamaha. Yeah, Hutchie's just out of sorts, coming back from big injury. Not ridden for, well, over a year before he uh, he went to the northwest a few weeks back. Can't be comfortable. We, yep. we know that leg is nowhere near healed. Having injured it again in the winter, that's two broken legs in two years. Yep. This is number 14, Ian Locker on the Kawasaki. And that's Phil Grieber. That's Dunlop yeah. behind him, That's William it? Dunlop, yeah. yeah, and that's not 10 seconds either. No, we would have expected that. William yeah. Dunlop riding extremely well. He's still knocked around. He had quite a big crash, actually, at the Northwest 200. He's still knocked around, but riding extremely well. And going to give his brother, in fact, he's very close to his brother. Yep. Times. This is between the two Dunlops at the moment. Yep, Michael leading just from William.
Yeah. Oh, that's Ian Locker. We didn't think that would take too long. No, not at all. And of course, William Dunlop not a, not on a TT yet. When will that come? McGuinness, Sulby, Crossroads. And this, this is, is Cameron Donald. Yeah, and this. I, I'm interested to see how quick the Suzuki is compared. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. Something well, seriously there wrong. There is. There's something wrong with that Taiko Suzuki of Guy Martin. There is that uh, day glow yellow helmet there of Cameron Donald, number four. Two wins to his credit, Cameron Donald, I'm talking about. But this man, John McGuinness, he's, uh, he's not as fast, of course. The Dunlop boys are getting away from him a bit. Yep, they are, and I, t I can tell you that there's a less than a second between Michael Dunlop leading this race and his brother William in second. Through the hairpin. Nice and neat. Yeah, nice and tidy, but then Mr McGuinness always is. On board with Michael Dunlop, number nine, R6 Yamaha. And that's uh, uh, Dan, Dan Neen. Neen. Dan Neen. Yep, it is. Dan Neen, the local boy from Braddon, in the Alaman. And Banaf into Dunlop, 1 2, and it's still Michael leading from William by nearly two seconds. 1.9 the split between the two of them. Michael leading from William at Banaf. Cameron Donald in third place ahead of Gary Johnson now. Gary Johnson in fourth. Bruce Anstey in fifth. Bruce Anstey wheeling through there on the Paget Honda. Check it out, weaving around everywhere, focus in his eyes. This is number 13, this is James Hilly on his Kawasaki, being hunted down now by William Dunlop. They set off 20 seconds apart. Looking back from William Dunlop, and they had all sorts of problems. Remember last year with engines blowing up and everything else, they seem to have got that sorted out. Uh, it, uh, the Wilson Craig team have got reliability, or well, that's what they're looking for. Look at the sea there, blue sea right behind you. Yeah, that's going up towards the waterworks and uh, up towards the gooseneck, and that's now William Dunlop in front of James. And this is Danny number eight, and this is at Conquer Trees, and this is oh. about 145 miles an hour. Look at that. Take a look at that showboating there, really. Number eight, Danny, terrific style there. He's a brave lad. So here we come, see what the difference is. It is Michael Dunlop, we think, leading from Cameron Donald. What is the advantage up at the bungalow now? And again, the crowd's all basking in the sunshine. And uh, there it is, eight second lead, Michael Dunlop over Cameron Donald. Yeah, we've got to wait for William Dunlop to come through at number 15. Terrific stuff there, Michael, big lad charging up the hill. And here comes his brother. This uh, man, William Dunlop, going so fast on this little bike. William says he's still got to, uh, stuff to learn, even though he's the elder brother of the two, he says he's still got to learn from younger brother Michael. William's at the bungalow now, and in fact it's Cameron Donald has gone into second place with William relegated to third. Michael leads Cameron Donald at the bungalow on lap one by eight seconds in third place now. It's number 15, William Dunlop, point two of the second behind Cameron Donald with Gary Johnson in fourth place, Bruce Anstey in fifth, and the top two on the road are already coming down the mountain. Now, now that, there's something wrong with that Suzuki. Yeah, very much so. John McGuinness, the leader on the road. John on corrected time at Ramsey had slipped down to eighth place from seventh again. Helen Hilliers in the Paget's colours, racing for Paget's in the uh, 600. Yeah, this is Michael Dunlop out of Governor's Dip onto the Glen Crutchery Road. And there is Michael. There's Michael going through with a furious waving of the left fist as he passed the pits. Whatever it is, Michael has done exceptionally well because he is now 10 seconds ahead of Cameron Donald. Guy Martin is coming into the pits. Martin is into the pits. Ian Hutchinson has gone through. Let's check downstairs with Chris Kinley. The mechanics are having a little look round it now. He just gives a shake of the head. Guy Martin is a retirement. Guy Martin is a retirement. So back on the leaderboard we had Michael Dunlop with a 10 second lead over number four Cameron Donald in third place is number 15 William Dunlop just 0.3 of a second behind Cameron and William has a lead of just under a second over number seven Gary Johnson 
massive crowd here today on these fantastic... There, Ryan Farquhar on the number two Kawasaki. Very stylish out of there. Yeah. In a fight for sixth place now with Dan Neen, the local boy. We're riding with Gary Johnson, looking back. Amazingly hot pace being set by Michael Dunlop at the lap. He now leads his brother William by 17 seconds. While on earth would their dad, Robert, the five-time TT winner, be making of this. His two lads dominating the leaderboard. And uh, are we going to see a pole? I think we're going to see here because Michael has made up a fair amount of time. Yeah, Michael set off number nine and Gary Johnson seven, so 20 seconds apart. That's one fast Yamaha, isn't it? it the is. R6 there is absolutely right. flying, yeah. isn't it? Yeah, it, it really is. is. This is uh, Corey Benz now. Look how much road he's using, using. I mean, we're talking about the TT riding 80%. There's no 80% there. There's there like isn't. 99% there from Michael Dunlop, number nine. This will be Anstey, I think, through Ramsey Airpin. It is on the Padgett's Honda. In fifth position. Bruce Anstey's quick this lap. Number five. Has he made inroads into Cameron Donald? I think he has. Up and under the trees there, watching out for all the flies and everything else. Awkward with the sunlight there, James. Yep. Yeah, you can just see what they're going through. All of us, all of dark. But oh, that's it. He takes a tear off off just to get the. And this is Conquer Trees. This is the race leader, number nine. Yeah, look at those bikes working and the heat haze from the exhaust pipe there. Number seven, Gary Johnson. Links lifting, Honda there. And look at it wriggling around underneath him and he's fighting it all the way. William Dunlop has been relegated now to third place. At the second place is Gary Johnson, who is that 20 seconds down on the race leader, Michael Dunlop. But now in third place is number 15, William Dunlop, who's one and a half seconds down on Gary Johnson. Then we have in fourth place, Cameron Donald, number four. And he's only one second down on William Dunlop. We're with William Dunlop passing Hachi, number six, on the Swan Yamaha. Yep, and that's just an indication of... Uh... Just how much uh, Ian Hutchinson struggling. Now this is the split. William Dunlop now at the bungalow with Donald. This is a battle for fourth, and I can third, tell you. Yeah, third and fourth. Yep. And there's been a change again, a change in the order because Cameron is now back into third place, and William Dunlop is now down to fourth. So more drama in the Supersport 600 race and with pit stops beckoning. But at the bungalow, Michael Dunlop with a 20 second lead over Gary Johnson. Gary was three seconds ahead of now. Number four, Cameron Donald has moved back up and William Dunlop has slipped back to fourth place, a second behind Cameron Donald. And now he's got Bruce Anstey snapping at his ankle. So although it's Michael who's stamping his presence on the leaderboard right at the very top, it's all to play for for the remaining places as they come into the pits. And we'll join Chris Kinley. And there is Cameron Donald. He's here now as well. Cameron's a little bit further down from us on the number four machine. And looks like Bruce Anstey next it is. Bruce is about three quarters of the way up. John's put a new visor on. And there, Bruce, oh yeah, nice and steady into the old stop box and out of that bit and into the Paget's box and he's away. Ryan's in, we've got Cameron in, we've got John in, he's just about to leave us now. But it's Mickey D we've got to look at, he's Bruce Anstey. Bruce, no problems in the first pit stop. So Gary Johnson, fuel cap on, yeah, good stuff, boys. He goes, turns the thing in, and Gary and Michael are going to leave together. But Michael's machine, oh, she's not looking... Oh, there she go. that could be a bit of seconds lost, but the lead he had at the bungalow was 21 seconds, so that could change. Williams here, let's have a look down at fourth, we heard. Last we checked, we'll get an update on that. William Dunlop confirmed in third place. In fourth, it was Bruce Anstey, and Cameron had actually dropped down to fifth place coming into the pit stop. Let's just have a look exactly where they are as they head down the hill. And it is confirmation, two of four. They're starting three now. It's a 21-second lead that Michael Dunlop has over Johnson. William Dunlop in third.
John McGuinness, that's him through Appledean. Yeah, seventh at the end of lap two. Bomb board now with Bruce Anstey. He's actually passed Donald now for fourth. He is. He's on a real charge, he's a New Zealander. Gary Johnson through Mill Creese Field. That's uh, Balagarieri going down towards Crosby. Yep. And that's Michael Dunlop chasing him. So Michael Dunlop still leading the race. That's the back of Ryan's Kawasaki. This is from Cam Donald's Honda. You can see how hard it is to pass here. Yeah, look at this. Now we're on board. You can see the revs. You can see the speed. Fourth gear section Pump through throttle. here. Yeah, and this is coming up onto Kong the body. And Cam Donald's Honda is a little bit quicker than Ralph Rockwell's Kawasaki. Yeah, and uh, look at the speed building. This is with 600cc machine here. Look at that. 173.5, 175 miles an hour. He just pins it through there. <laughs> 160 round drink quarters at the end of Kong the body. This is the uh, this really good shots. Number nine, Michael Dunlop, race leader. Riding uh, with him. This is Appledean section. So Michael Dunlop still leads this race. He's got two wins to his credit. Can he make it three? Oh, not with that, he can't. That's gone. Yeah, that's long. Lost a cylinder or something, hasn't yep. it? Yep. Oh, no, what bad luck, Michael oh. Dunlop. He switched back to the R6 Yamaha. And it's just it was a brand new bike as well. That's not as sick, is it? It's not going to go a lot further. It's slow and it's sounding rough. He will be oh, no, absolutely distraught. That's his brother William Dunlop. He's still going strong. This is uh, Glen Vine area, and this is it. Michael Dunlop's out. That's just after Ballaspur. Job's over. Definitely lost a cylinder or something. Yeah, it? it's a bit. That's ruined, the, that's ruined the picnic. How disappointing for him. So he's still got those two wins. I thought it was going to be three today, but it's all going on here. Cam Donald. Yeah. Bruce Ansett riding with him. He's just getting faster and faster. Bruce is slowly waking up to this. Now then, Michael Dunlop out. What does that mean? That means probably Johnson's leading. Yeah, he will be, won't he? Gary Johnson, so again, he had a win last year. Can he make it another one there? It's the times between Johnson and Donald. Yep. Uh, we can now give the leaderboard. Gary Johnson leads Cameron Donald by three and a half seconds. In third place, Bruce Anstey, who was one second down on Donald. And in fourth, William Dunlop, 1.3 seconds down on Anstey. Look at the focus there from Ryan Farquhar, the Irishman. Look at that throttle really pinned through Just there. Now. Yeah, and the bike squirrelling around. Well, McGuinness over the top, he comes front wheel up in the air, but he's leading on the road, but he certainly isn't leading the race. And this is still going on. Not much between those bikes. We thought Cam Donalds was faster, but slips through. Look at that, Ryan Farquhar has a good look across. Excuse me, Sonny, I want to come through there, but he's not allowing it because Cameron Donald, the Australian, says, no way, sunshine. Yep. And that's Cam Donald still in front because he's set off 20 seconds apart. This is William Dunlop now going down into Parliament Square. Now he's, he's fourth, but only 3.6 seconds behind Bruce Anstey in third. Trying everything he knows. Here is Brucey. Yep. Paget's machine, Clive Paget back in the pits there. You'll know that the bike will be running good. They put such a good motorcycle underneath their ride. Absolutely. You know, they've had uh, 23, out of 23 races, they've had 18 and 19 finishes. They haven't had any block ever as the Paget's team. Now, this is the clock done. Now, this is the battle for second place. And Anstey's got it at the bungalow. Yeah, he has. Look at that. Point three two. Bruce Anstey is really on the charge. Flying Kiwi has woken up. Bruce Anstey, number five, is in second place at the bungalow. And Gary Johnson has less of a lead now than he did when he passed Roy Moore at Ramsey. It's just over three seconds, 3.09 to be precise. Gary Johnson leading Bruce Anstey at the bungalow. Cameron Donald is now in third place. Only point three of a second behind Bruce Anstey, though. So these podium places still very much up the ground. In fourth place, it's still William Dunlop. Meanwhile, John McGuinness has got past Dan Neen on corrected time. John McGuinness is up into fifth place with Dan Neen sixth. Now we're riding with William Dunlop. This is dropping down the nook into the slowest part of the track. This is Governor's Dip. Yellow Governor's flag Bridge. out there. Yeah, hang on. Let's have a look. Yeah, lots of waved yellow flags here. Yep, we'll flick left and then flick right again. I haven't seen anything. Oh, there is there, yeah, that, that, that will be Neen. Uh, that's got to be Dan Neen. 
Yeah. Has to be down knee. Oh, he's out. So at the end of that three or four laps, it's a two-second advantage for Johnson over Anstey. Donald is just another two seconds further back. Uh, news of Dan Neen, by the way, is that he came off at Governors with minor back injuries and has been taken to hospital. Dan Neen on lap two off at Governors with minor back injuries. Right, we're on the final lap and this is so close at the front. Yeah, that's Cam Donald with Ralph Farquhar still behind him. This is Anstey now. Anstey's in second and less than three seconds cover the first three starting the final lap. And there is John McGuinness. Now, he's actually gone back up into fifth. That's confirmed that that was Dan Neen that crashed, and he's out. He's got minor back injuries, but OK. So John McGuinness has moved back up to fifth. Gary Johnson, he leads this race, but it's, uh, it's closing up all the time, Steve. Has Bruce got enough time in the final lap of the mountain course, 37 and three-quarter miles, to continue the way he's catching up Gary Johnson? But Gary Johnson leading by 2.06 seconds over number five, Bruce Anstey. Through Kirk Michael, it's so fast through here, even the riders think it, let alone us. Here you go, and you can see how fast, 170 miles an hour. Houses, walls, trees, lampposts, and using up, even the, using the double yellow lines there, full throttle. Exactly, just going to say full throttle. You know, we're now out towards the Ren Cullen jumps. Get it straightened up for that one. Yep. So, Brucey is uh, still on the charge. Uh, this is James Hillier chasing Dan Stewart. This is number seven. The race leader just by about a second. And it is so close at the front. Gaz Johnson just going into Ramsey. This will be Cam Donald on the mountain. And it's, uh, this is so close. Riding with him and it is screaming. Absolutely, about, what, 16,000 RPM, these things. Yeah. Over the railway tram lines they go. Down on the up. throttle. Yep, straight away, shifting as quick as he can. Come up to the highest part of the circuit here, up towards Snaefell, Halewoods Heights we come to. Yep, this is Bruce Anstey, and he, he's having a real go at this. Yeah, and you know Bruce Anstey, he just gets faster and faster as the race goes on. He's good over the mountain section, but then so's Johnson, for that matter. Yep. Gary Johnson at the bungalow, which is just where he's coming. He's losing time. He's lost time on the mountain climb to that man. Could it be fuel? Don't know. It's early in the lap for that, I've got to say. Now, this is the former race that he's, we think by the time he gets to the bungalow, he's going to have lost that lead to Bruce Anstead. Well, I hope he's uh, not run out of fuel. That wouldn't be much luck. He's tight on fuel, we know, with these machines. Let's have a listen. And he's dropped a third. He's actually dropped behind Anstey and Donald. OK, so it's now all about Cameron Donald and Bruce Anstey and the run down to the line, and there is Cameron Donald. And I can tell you that Cameron Donald, I think, is actually almost catching Anstey for the win now. News of Ryan Farquhar is that he's out of fuel at Craig Nibar. So the drama keeps on coming. It is the run to the line now. That, that, that's actually Gary Johnson, and he's not going quick. That isn't quick. I'll tell you now, I think he is running out of petrol. I think you were right. Yeah. That's slow. Yeah, not that's good not. news. That's too often. Listen, he stopped. He's yeah. coasting. He's pulled the clutch. Time post corner. Yeah, yeah. He's out of it. He's out. So it is Cam Donald and Bruce Anstey. Uh, this is Bruce. This is Bruce going down into the nook now. It's New Zealand versus Australia at the moment. Here we go. Out. We're on board with Cameron Donald. It's going to be about 10 seconds the gap before he comes up. Who has got this one? He, this is. I, I can't even call it. Cameron Donald started 10 seconds ahead of Bruce Anstey. Gary Johnson is now uh, six seconds down, so clearly some difficulties for Gary. And now can Bruce get here in less than 10 seconds? Five seconds have gone. We look down Glen Country Road. Here comes Anstey now. Crosses the line. I think it's Anstey's. I think it's Anstey who's done it. We wait for confirmation. It is. It's Anstey who's done it by less than a second. Less than a second after over 150 miles of racing. Would you believe it? And Gary Johnson has just completed pushing in with applause round pit lane. Clearly some problems on the second half of the final lap. We wait to find out exactly what the problem was there. Well, and Bruce, did you know it was as close as it was? I think 0.7 between yourself and the Cammy in the end there. Did you get a sense of that? Yeah, because over the mountain I was getting plus zero, zero, plus zero, zero. So we were neck and neck. So down the mountain I just gave it everything I got just to come out onto the last straight to, to run out of fuel. Oh, God, no. It's like, but I managed to do it, so really over the moon. Again, my first lap was too slow. I was really 
peed off about that, so I just put my head down, went for it for the last three laps. Just a break on the team are coming here now, Annie and the gang will be here. Cameron, Cameron, that was just incredibly close and very exciting for us. How did it feel for you out there? Yeah, it was exciting too. And I, look, I really enjoy riding this motorcycle. It's um. We learned a lot in that race as well. We did struggle for a lack of practice time, and I'm sure with the knowledge I've got from that race, we can definitely go quicker on Wednesday. Conditions are uh, all being well, but um, I knew it was coming down to the, uh, you know, it was going to be nothing at the finish, but uh, so we just just missed out. But um, you know, no shame in finishing second to Bruce. I'm quite proud of the result. Congratulations, mate! Your first podium. How's it feel? Yeah, no, pretty nice. Wrong possession, but <laughs> yeah, no, really happy. With it. Just thanks to the team, all the boys. Been bait was brilliant. Just, just didn't ride it hard enough. First few laps were interesting. Yourself and Michael were involved in quite a, quite a battle. Yeah, and I felt pretty good first couple of laps, and then just started to go off, and nothing, nothing I can say, nothing to do with the bike, just, just myself. So, you know, we'll work hard for, for the second race. We'll have a good crack at it. Yeah, you have said that when you beat Michael, he sulks for a couple of weeks and he won't talk to you. <laughs> Are you looking forward to that? <laughs> I'm going to have to move house. That's the same. I'm a good TT. I'm going to have to move out. <laughs> So it's win number nine for New Zealand's Bruce Anstey, ten years after his first TT victory. And great celebrations for himself, Cameron Donald and William Dunlop. Unfortunately, a bit of a dib-dib drenched for the scout. It was in fact the second closest finish in TT history. Less than a second separating Bruce Anstey, Cameron Donald and Gary Johnson at Ramsey. Anstey held his nerve to finish first, Cameron Donald took second and after Gary Johnson ran out of fuel, William Dunlop snuck his way into third place. What a day. Great win for Bruce. Next up is race day number two of the Virtual TT, powered by Motul. Welcome to the second edition of the TT Lock-In, where I'm once again joined by two times a TT winner and my co-host for this week. It's Steve Plater. Steve, how are you doing? Yeah, good, Chris. Thank you. Enjoying the action. Good. Uh, did you end up watching the uh, the three-wheeling documentary last night? I did, yeah. You know, I'm a massive sidecar fan, and that's, of course, why Arthur is why we organised uh, to get a lap round with Ben Birchall. A fabulous experience, so I've obviously got a great insight into how the whole package works now. Well, it just now, if you did miss out on that, you can head over to TT Race's official YouTube channel and catch up on all the action. Now, we've just witnessed one of the closest races in TT history. It truly went down to the wire. There was nothing in it at the end. And we're pleased to be joined by two people who were at the heart of the action throughout that race. We're going to be joined by Five shortly. But first up, all the way from Australia, is a slightly bleary-eyed Cameron Donald. Now, before we chat to him, let's take a look at Cameron's first win over on the island. You've been second here before. Can you get on the top step of the podium today? Oh, look, I'm not sure. You know, a podium I'd be absolutely wrapped with. But for me today, I'm just still going out there to learn the circuit a bit better. Cameron Donald comes out of that, goes lead to that front wheel behind. First TT. 
hats off to all the boys. I mean, the Suzuki just ran so well coming up over that mountain the last time. And I know now what the boys talk about when they say they're listening to the bike and whatnot. So I was really thinking, come on, girl, but she just, just ran beautifully all the way to the end and everything worked really well. What an amazing race. Cameron Donald looking a bit fresher than he probably is right now. Cam, how are you doing over in Australia? What time is it over there right now? Uh, I think it's getting on towards about 4 a.m. now. So it's uh, well, 4.30 a.m., I should say, so quite early. Oh, mate, well, we appreciate that total dedication to the TT. Now, listen, four laps, right, 150 miles, an hour and 15 minutes of racing, and it comes down to one second. Even in fact, less than one second. How does it feel to actually lose a race of that distance by such a short margin? Yeah, it's one of those things that's quite difficult to comprehend at the time. I mean, yeah, well over a thousand corners and, and of course a pit stop as well, a refuel. It was such a close race. I mean, I, I think I was getting three signal boards around the course and, and they were showing during those four laps my position ranging from P1 to P5. So. It was in, incredibly close, um, but at the end of the day, I gave it everything, and that's where I ended up. So I was still, still quite, you know, happy and proud of the second place, but nonetheless, gutted <laughs> that I missed out on a win. Hey Cam, how you doing, mate? Now the pace was really hot in that race, of course, between four of you, not just the two. As obviously yourself, Bruce, Michael Dunlop, and Gaz Johnson, all within a shout of the win, and it was so, so tight. Now. On the 600s, do you prefer riding those things really, really hard, being a smaller and lighter, than riding the superbike around a TT course? Yes, yeah, Steve. I, I've actually found the the 600 more challenging than the superbike. It's you've got to ride them harder. You can't rest at all. Any tiny mistake will be magnified. You don't have the power to to make up for a, a bad line or a, a missed gear or whatnot that you do with the superbike. So you need to be just pinpoint accurate with the 600. So in that, they're, they're more challenging to ride, as I'm sure you know yourself, Steve. So, yeah, it was it's a class that I so desperately wanted to win and many seconds, but unfortunately we didn't get the win, but that was as close as we got was that, uh, that super sport race. Now, Cam, like myself, has moved from racing to doing TV work, commentating on MotoGP over in Oz and presenting the Isle of Man TT. Cam is down at Braddenbridge. The Isle of Man TT, 37 and three quarter miles of motorcycle racing Nirvana. Now we're here at Braddon Bridge, which is 1.5 miles into the TT lap. Riders approach this section in fourth gear in excess of 150 miles an hour for braking hard back to second gear for what's actually the first tight left-hand turn of the course. Riders will drop down to about 60 miles an hour as they negotiate this crest in the road, being quite careful because it's the first time they'll be on the left-hand side of the tyre with a full tank of fuel and fresh tyres. Flicking to the right, they'll drive out of this turn. Now, it's very important for them to get on the throttle as early as possible because this section up to Union Mills is back up to six gear in excess of 170 miles an hour. The secret to being quick around the Isle of Man course is trying to raise, raise that average speed at every opportunity you can. Every mile an hour that rider can carry through here, they're going to build on over that next section. And that's the secret to winning at the Isle of Man TT. I can see the passion there and see how you're enjoying it. Now, for the last time you raced the TT properly, 2016, I never heard of proper retirement. If you to get offered a proper ride for 2021, would it be a yes or a no? Uh, no, I think, I think uh, my racing days at the TT on modern bikes are, are past. Dearly love to come back and ride the classic again, but for now, it's funny, you still get those glimmers sometimes. You, you know, I'll be doing a track day and, and, you know, enjoy riding the bike so much, and I just long to ride a, a modern superbike around the TT, but then, then common sense prevails. <laughs> I'll be honest, I'm hoping both of you make a comeback to, to racing so I can end up presenting the TT next year. Cam, stay exactly where you are because we're going to be joining Clive now. Now, this man has the TT running through his veins. He's taken John McGuinness, Bruce Anstey, Ian Hutchinson, all to victory within his team. It is, of course, Clive Paget.
one of the most iconic names in motorcycle road racing, the family-run Padgett's team have been racking up TT successes for the past five decades. It's an Alan Superbike win, four to Alan Guinness. Some legendary riders have set landmark achievements along the way. Oh, it's super bad. He nearly loses it, but he's done it. Ian Hutchinson, that has made a total of eight CT wins by this week. Bruce Anstey, the number five Paddy on the go, over the line to take his 10th TT win, his first in the Super Bike class. Based in the small town of Batley in the heart of West Yorkshire, the racing team is part of a much bigger story. Following in the footsteps of his father, Clive Padgett has built up a hugely successful motorcycle business, whilst continuing the legacy of Padgett's Racing, one of the most established privateer teams in road racing today. There's only one real way to say hello to a Yorkshireman. Hey up, Clive, how are you doing? And uh, how's things up at hey, Padgett guys. HQ right now? Well, let's say good morning, Cam, first of all, and hi, Steve and Chris. Uh, all is good, thanks. Of course, we're like everyone else out there, all the fans and so on. We've got to wait another 355 days at the moment, as everyone's aware, before we can head off down Bray. And, um, you know, those days, they're ticking away, but we'll get there. Now, looking back on that race back in 2012, it was, well, it was quintessential Bruce, really, wasn't it? Slow out of the gate, eventually built his speed up, and then once he got into his groove, well, it was unstoppable, weren't he? Well, we got to hand it to uh, to Michael initially. I mean, Michael did run away with the thing in the first place. I don't know if you can remember, but Michael had quite some lead, you know, I think in 10 seconds, 15 seconds or so, he was, he'd gone with it. And then the R6, uh, I think, stopped. But uh, what a great race it made afterwards, you know, with the, the guys in the pack behind. And sure, you know, Cam and, um, and Bruce, what an absolute nail-biting finish. I think, was it 0.77 in the end between the pair of them? You'll, uh, you'll also remember that, Cam, I'm sure. But, uh, hey, in fact, second closest race ever in history. Um, I think the closest one was when we won the 125 race with Mike Baldwin back in 1995. And I think that was 0.6 of a, a, a second. So, uh, yeah, two, two incredible races. Well, now every day is a school day, even for me. Now, it was a spectacular race, like you said, and there was plenty of drama on the track, but we were chatting just previously, Clive, about the drama that happened on the start line. Just run through for people that don't know what happened and how John McGuinness ended up nearly missing the Super Sport race. Well, that's right, and, and we mustn't forget John's superb fourth place, you know. What a day for the team, first and fourth, and... Uh, quite something but no you probably many of the fans don't know just the ins and out of it but john arrived at the uh, at the grid and he brought two gloves of course but he brought two left hand gloves and um all oh, those bedlam you know get down the paddock jump on a monkey bike jump on a scooter get down there and um just with really minutes to go seconds to go i'm sorry we we got two gloves on him off he shot down bray and uh, quite something it really made some uh, an extraordinary start to the race and uh, just to, uh, to, to tell the fans as well, Bruce actually rocked up at the grid one time with one glove. And we had a similar drama trying to get a second glove. And there, there are fans offering gloves and all sorts. So, uh, you know, <laughs> these guys take some looking after, don't you, Cam and Steve? <laughs> Diva, a lot of them. Clive, what does it mean to you to miss a TT like we're all missing at the minute? you know something we were only chatting last week i was born in january and my dad took me to my first race meeting in the march of that year and um if we don't go racing this season it's the first time i've never been racing in my whole life uh, i've been racing every single year since i was born so yeah sure initially you're in the carry cot and so on and you you know you begin to wobble around the paddock and, and learn a few things um i oh, know we're all aching to be at race meetings, particularly the tt Hey Clive, now 
Connor's doing a great job for you. Podium last year for you. In fact, he's been getting on the podium for the last 10 years at the TT. What's it going to take to get that local Manx man on the top step? Well, I tell you, Connor is such a superhuman being. Rumble then with Connor Cummings, first on the road. Connor, congratulations, you end the week on the podium, third place. Is that realistically the best result you could have hoped for before the start? Yeah, as much as I want to, I want to go bigger racing to win, um, yeah, I think uh, what we got there was where we expected. But, you know, we've... we've Such a chilled out rider, Clive. You know, what's it going to take for him to, to get on that top step? And, you know, he's uh, such a good guy to work with. It's so easy going. Incredible. And, you know, when we were, we, people talk about Bruce and, hey, you know, Bruce is so laid back and, you know, Bruce gets to the garage very late and all the rest of it. And you've seen him running at the paddock, putting a boot on and so on. And the first year we worked with uh, Connor, you know, I thought, well, where is he? He's, even Bruce beats him here. And absolutely, Bruce beats Connor to the garage. So you're 100% right. Uh, Connor is, we will keep, as he said there, chipping away. Uh, I think we keep learning something each year. Um, each year that Connor's been to the TT with us, we've gone quicker every year. So providing we can keep building on that, um, we'll chip away. But th th we're not kidding ourselves. There's still a step to Peter and Dean. Um, those guys are certainly on fire. Let's hope we can, uh, you know, bring the new blade out and um, see if it will uh, help us bridge that gap a little. Let's take a quick look, Clive. You've obviously got uh, the superbike behind you, Malenko bike. You know, just just give us a quick talk through that superbike. Well, yeah, absolutely. For the fans that haven't got the race bike this year, it's about time that. Um, you know, you've had a look around or got to see uh, what the whole thing's about. This is Connor's super bike that he was on the podium at uh, last year two times. It was a new bike for last season, 218. He had a, a further super bike, an earlier super bike that we ran. And um, this was the bike that he also was on the podium at the uh, Northwest and the Ulster. Um, for the fans out there that are not familiar, of course, you're aware it's a thousand cc in line. You're talking around 225 horsepower of the rear wheel, give or take. Uh, 174 kilos, 24 liter fuel tank, fly-by-wire HRC throttle. Uh, quite some motorcycle, you know, Dunlop tires, which we've run for many, many years. Lots and lots of confidence in the Dunlop tires. Uh, Cam and yourself, Steve, have spent lots of time on those and um, lots of faith in them, I realize. But, uh, hey, it's a shame we can't have a question and answer, guys, because I'd be real happy to answer some of the band's questions about the uh, about this lovely Malenko uh, Paget Superbike. Clive, you've had, so, you've had so much success over the years with so many great riders. Do you actually know how many victories Paget's racing have accumulated around the TT course? Steve, I really, really don't. You know, we've, we've never been one for looking back. You know, I think I heard at the introduction there that uh, we've had TT wins over five decades, but I'm told it's six decades because I think Phil Reed won back then the 60s on my dad's bike. He keeps reminding me of just Phil anyway. And um, so it's quite something. And I saw a lovely, lovely uh, tribute the other day that we'd had uh, 84 international podiums during the 10s of the last decade. Um, coupled with the uh, the classic uh, podiums and so on, coupled with the Dundrop podiums, that was over a hundred podiums in um, you know in, in a decade. I, I can't believe that when I actually think ten a year. You think, wow, we're just a bunch of friends going racing, and you know, I realise that you hate me saying that, Ian. Oh, that's okay, of course. He said we're better than that, but we really are a bunch of friends. I couldn't go racing without Dave and Howard and Stevie and Wayne and Ray and you know all of our team. We're so if you look at the team, we've been together forever, and uh, you'd see that with the grey hairs. I don't think we have a team member without grey hair. Um, but um, 
And, uh, you know, we've got Phil Robinson on the team. Phil's certainly got great. And a younger boy, Chris Dixon, now helping us. And, uh, yeah, we're all, what's the word? Chris is actually younger, isn't it? We, we have to lie about his age to get in the team, by the way. Clive, we have got some questions coming in, actually. Uh, and a question is, uh, someone wants to know, how much would it set you back to buy one of those t uh, super bikes? To build one or to buy one? Once they've had a great deal of success, that sometimes adds value, but that's in patina and so on, rather than the actual built cost of the motorcycle. But certainly to mm -hmm. build something like this, you know, you're 100,000 plus. Yeah. Well, my next, Steve, you could buy three. <laughs> so Clive, what, what was Cam Donald like as a rider? You can be completely honest. <laughs> super, super man. The only thing I would say, Cam would totally agree with me on this one. He was riding a different brand of bike that year that absolutely scared him to death. And um, the, 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 the year, am I right, Cam? Yeah, you're not wrong there, Clive. <laughs> yeah. And uh, I think the year that we, we had Cam on our bike, he had two strong finishers, but we certainly didn't see Cam at his best that year. And that was simply because he was clinging on for grim death on something else that was wobbling around the circuit with him on the back of it. Um, but no, super, super, super human being, lovely man to work at, uh, to work with, uh, like yourself, Steve. In fact, I was only looking at a picture of you in my house last night. A uh, brilliant picture that you guys gave me with the three of you, John, Hutch, and yourself, and you all signed it, which was lovely back in 09. And, um, yeah, something something to uh, treasure and remember. But, uh, no, I don't think um, – what's the word? We haven't had any guys that are hard work. If You know yourself, if you ask me for a square front wheel and you think you'll go quicker with it, I will get you a square front wheel to test. So, yeah, not a problem. I think if you always try and provide the guys with the their – desired wish you know their uh, the bike that what they want under them then i think it's always going to be a happy team hey cam what uh so so you know let's give us a proper picture now what's it actually like riding for the batley boys yeah riding for clive and the team was a was a great experience. It really was. And it's a shame I, I couldn't um, give the, the super sport bike the results that it was capable of the year that I rode with Clive. But I, I must say, this is, um, you know, I'm not saying this just to be polite. Clive has been a good friend since I first came to the TT paddock. And he's actually given me some really valuable advice, even believe it or not, when I've been riding other brands of motorcycle, like he's, I bounce things off him. He's always been very honest and, and as I said, given me some good advice and even, supplied me parts and whatnot when I've actually ridden other brands of motorcycles, which is pretty incredible and just goes to show how much um, Clive just lives motorcycle racing and, you know, is happy to help anyone and, <clears throat> and will let the, the results fall the way they do on the on the track. So, yeah, it, it was brilliant working with the team. They're an amazingly efficient crew. And as we all know how well the bikes are prepared and turned out and what they're capable of. Now we saw the man who ended up winning the race, Bruce Ansey. So it'd be uh, it'd be rude not to ask Clive exactly how Bruce is doing at the minute, and if we're likely to see him back at the TT in 2021. Well, I think there's only Bruce himself can answer that one in terms of whether we're back at the TT. Certainly, if he wishes to be, then he will have our total and utter support with any motorcycle he wants to ride or race. Um, you know, I speak and text all the time. We're we're just. Yeah, it's part of the family, full stop, like most of our riders become. But um, in, in terms of the cancer, I think Bruce will tell you he's much, much healthier than he was. I think, you know, perhaps he'd like to be a little bit stronger. Um, you know, the, the chemo and the heavy sessions of that took the took the toll on him. But as we saw last year, he was able to come back and ride the Wii 250 at the Classic and, and was absolutely stunning. You know, I think um, the most emotional win ever for me at least, on the Isle of Man. There were grown men at 60 and 70 year old crying. And, and not just because Bruce had won, of course, after having the treatment for two years, but I think we've all been touched by cancer throughout our families. Somebody somewhere has had friends, family, and um, yeah, absolutely emotional. But uh, at the moment, uh, in fact, I guess today, he's probably been flying that helicopter of his in his back garden. And uh, that's one of the uh, small, 
I say small, no, they're not. They're probably two meter wingspan. But uh, he loves that, and uh, he's been isolating because you know his immune system isn't at the best at the minute through what he's been through. But uh, he's on absolutely top form, and um, yeah, hi Bruce. He won't, in fact, I'm saying hello. He won't even be watching this. No chance. Um, he's just, uh, as we know, he does what he does. Comes, sleeps, rides a bike, and uh, catch him on the day, and he can be the best. He's a great, great man that can be so annoying, just being half asleep all the time and so, so flipping fast, he really is. You know, he, he's kind of a, a, a real special kind of a person, you know. Um, Clive, now, you've been working with a, a young guy, uh, David Todd, another up-and-coming rider who's been adapting real quick, 131.5 or just under his done there on a TT course. Do you see a lot of future in that boy? I think you've got to see the future. Anybody that's watched Davey, worked with him, speak to him, his mentality, his approach. Um, as a person, you know, quite incredible. Davey's 24 now, so he's really, really on the right side of things. Um, he had his first international win with us last year at the Northwest on the 600, as you saw. Um, he then went into half podiums with us at the Ulster, and he two great, great finishes on the 600 at the TT. Um, Without a shadow of a doubt, I think the whole world will be saying, yeah, yeah, David can ride a bike. They've seen that now. What I would like to see, because he's very, very, very capable, um, is to him, for him to have a season on the short circuits. Um, he's sort of done it in reverse, if we look at it. He's almost got known for the roads first rather than done the short circuits and then progressed. But believe me, if the guy gets a shot on the short circuits, which was the plan this year with Honda, um, I think we'll see something special on the short circuits as well. And Cam, who do you see as coming through? Have you looked at any riders that are coming up through the ranks who you might think will be will be there or thereabouts, kind of where Davey is at the minute? Yeah, it was actually Davey that I was thinking of as probably one of the most promising up and comers at the moment. But it's um, yeah, it's it's an interesting time because the uh, there hasn't been any uh, anyone to ruffle the feathers of the established riders. Um, really in the in the past few years there's still that little bit of a gap to bridge the top tt riders at the moment are just pushing so so hard um i certainly wouldn't want to be coming through the ranks now but it, it's it's all for the taking for for the next generation that is for sure because the uh the current crew aren't getting any younger are they steve <laughs> now cam another question for you mate you know we spoke about of course uh, you're not talking about retirement earlier and stuff are you planning on doing any more racing at all uh, whether it be tt or classic tt or are you going to stick to the tv job which you're doing a great job uh, thanks mate i still love racing i mean i was out on the enduro bike all day yesterday um public holiday here in australia so still ride bikes you know several times a week even here in the winter and love my riding and love my racing just for fun so it's mainly classic bikes now um Still spend plenty of time on track, so I want to keep racing classic bikes as, as long as I can keep riding motorcycles because I still love the thrill of racing. So that's for sure. I can't see me giving that up in uh, in a hurry. Now, Clive, we touched on it briefly when we were talking about Bruce, but were you surprised at that victory over at the Classic TT? Uh, surprised? Uh, no. He's as we said earlier, he's just such a superhuman being. And we went to Donington Park to a CMR, CMCR meeting to for Bruce to get his eye in again and to get some points for his license, to be fair. We had to get a couple of signatures. And, um, you know, he, he just jumped on the motorcycle quick straight away. And um, then we got to the to the classic and he did the outlap, of course. And um, I, I saw the guys come through and it was on the commentary and the commentator came over and said uh, on, the, on the loudspeaker, hey, we just had uh, Dean through. And of course, Dean had won the uh, senior TT last year. Just had Dean through and it was Dean's uh, third year on his 250. And Dean's done, wow, 114. And a minute or so later, Bruce came through and the commentator's looking at him and what? Bruce just went 22 seconds quicker than that. Bruce is now the fastest of the night. And, you know, he did 116 mile an hour on a 250 yeah. on his second lap in two years. He, like uh, Steve said, he, he's just an enigma. You know, we we um, 
we go testing and within two or three laps, he may have been away from it for a year or a winter, not riding a motorcycle, and he's running out to the grass and on the white line and he's just such a good feel for a motorcycle. Oh. Cam, obviously you came yeah. through the ranks, yeah. mate, you know, Australian Championship and, and we raced together at Macau many, many years ago. But the first time you came to the TT, what was your first initial feeling riding around the circuit? Well, when you, when you say my initial uh, feeling, I think about the first time I came there to spectate in 2004 um, and watched from, of all corners, Balagheri, and it just blew me away, just the bikes going past the speed and just you could feel the energy through your whole body. And, um, you know, I still get that same thrill spectating now, and it was just something when I saw it, I thought I had to do it. Um, what I was feeling when I first lapped the course, I don't know. That was a, a surreal experience because... The adrenaline and the, the amount of emotion going on and, and your focus just on, on trying to learn the course. But it was like nothing else. And yeah, I got up at um, three o'clock this morning, it was, uh, to, to, to log on to everyone at home. And as soon as we started watching those, um, the clips, you know, my heart race, my heart's racing, my adrenaline's going and, it's, you know, it's the TT. It just always has that effect on you. And, and that's, that's why we love it. Clive, another question that's just come in. Um, do you love going racing as much as you did way back at the start? Obviously, it's changed slightly. It's a little more corporate nowadays, but do you still get the buzz? Do you still get the excitement as ever? Well, actually, someone to my left there, Susan, is just laughing because she absolutely knows that um, I used to say I was passionate about it. Now, apparently, I'm obsessed with it. I'm not passionate. I'm obsessed. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I believe it. And clearly, guys, you fans are going to mock this. I woke up nervous last Saturday. It was race day. I just, there is nothing else. It's, it's the reason to wake up. It's the re we got to keep going forward, pushing. Um, so, yeah, in answer to that question, even more so. Yeah, you keep learning something every year that you think, hey, if we chip away at that and we do this, and that's point one there, or point three there. And, uh, hey, yeah, absolutely. And if yeah, I could just say something else, we've talked about. A, a, a new crop of riders, but don't forget, you know the likes of Hickey, Dean, Connor, Michael. Michael's not even thirty yet, and he's got nineteen team win, uh, nineteen wins under his belt. We're not short of some a good crop of uh, you know relatively young riders there at the moment. And uh, you know Hutchie, look at the great sixteen wins he's had. He's only forty years old, and he's gone through hell and back. So uh, no, we we've still got a great set of riders there. And uh, you know, sure, let's see Davy come through and have some more youngsters coming through the ranks. But uh, it's, it, we mustn't forget the current crop of riders. You know, there's, uh, there's one Mr. Anstey that's a little older than those, but um, don't write him off just yet. Now, Clive, you know, you've obviously done a fantastic job for years managing many riders winning around the TT course. You indeed were a fabulous rider as a youngster. You know, your career was cut very, very short at quite an early age. Was your plan to race the TT course like with some of your other family as well? To be fair, Steve, it's a really, really relevant question. I did race the Southern 100, which we appreciate is not the uh, TT. I did that in my first full season of racing the, the Southern. And uh, as it happened, Joey won the race and I was second. Um, it was a, a real experience. And, you know, I did race Spa, the old full, full circuit Spa and Imatra and so on in the Grand Prix. Um, and I had hoped to go in 1978, which is such a long time ago, but I would be, what, 19 then? Um, and it, the plan was, I really, I was doing Grand Prix that year, and um, the plan was, but Tom Heron, my dear friend Tom, who was giving me a steer and, and looking after me and guiding me, Tom said I wasn't ready for it. He said, Clive, come on, man, you, you're doing great. Everything's going your way, but you're not ready for the TT. And he was probably right. I took that advice, you know. Um, and I was watching there that year and helping, but um, I, I didn't compete myself. And uh, But as we know, my dear brother Gary went on to win a couple of TTs. So uh, it was in the blood somewhere. Listen, gents, I could listen to your stories all night, but I think Cam is, uh, is probably starting to nod off. Not th through the boring stories, though, Clive. I think it's just too early in the morning for him. So I just want to take this opportunity to say, Cam, a huge thank you for joining us and Clive as well over in Batley. Thank you so much for joining us on this TT in Live. Tomorrow, we have... Oh, 
of course. Hello, Francesca. Tomorrow. I must say hello. On the next... like oh, is that... oh. Sorry, sorry, Clive. Sorry. <laughs> Did we get that guy? Right, I want to tell him, Blake and Francesca. Thank you. Ciao. <laughs> it's taking over the show. <laughs> brilliant, absolutely brilliant. Hi, thank you, Cam. Thank you, Steve, as ever. Thank you. So tomorrow, as I was saying, we have the man himself, Mr. 135 miles an hour, joining us for a chat for the TT lock-in. It's Peter Hickman. <laughs> We're on board with Peter Hickman. As he heads down Bray Hill. Takes right foot, right down next to the ground. Incredible. Hello everybody and welcome back to the Virtual TT powered by Motul. It's race day number two. Now we've taken eight gamers and eight riders and teamed them up together. Both rider and gamer will complete one lap of the TT course. Those times will be aggregated together to give them an overall team time. The team leading the way at the end of the competition will be crowned 2020 Virtual TT Champions. Last time out, we saw Team Coward take an early lead thanks to a blisteringly fast lap from team leader, Jamie Coward. He set a time of 16 minutes and 37 seconds. We've got two teams tonight on the start line, ready to battle it out. But if you needed any reminding just how exhilarating the TT is, roll VT. I want to hear. We're on board with Peter Hickman. It's incredible. Takes right foot, right down next to the ground. Much wider, he's lying out of there. We're on board with Peter Hickman, a little bit of flames, and he'll be looking to build on his lead. Well, that's the man that every TT rider is aspiring to be as quick as. And our next team captain, well, I'm going to name him the Spanish Peter Hickman. He made his TT debut in 2016 at the Manx, where he finished a very respectable sixth place. And this man around the TT circuit cannot be missed. His bright yellow levers and his bright yellow bike. It is, of course, Raul Torres. Raul, how are you? Hello, how are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? Yeah, yeah, good, really good. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. Um, Raul. Obviously, we're all gutted not to be at the TT. Um, it must be it must be gutting for you as well as as everybody else, I guess. Yeah, I I feel I feel sad because I, I wish to be there. I wish to be on the TT uh, on the bike and and, and going down Brain Hill, but. Unfortunately, as you all know, uh, it's impossible. We have to take care of uh, all of us. We have to stay at home. And all we can do right now is only racing at the TT, but virtual. So, Raul, it's time to meet your teammate for Team Martinez now. This man has one of the most famous surnames in all of racing history. But the biggest question is, is he any good at gaming? Aaron Hislop, are you any good at gaming? Not the TT game, no. Good at <laughs> other gaming. <laughs> Mate, you like you're, uh, hopefully you're better at, uh, at gaming than you are at, at whatever you did to, uh, to break your arm. 
riding a bike. Mate, bicycles, they're dangerous. You've got to stay away from them. It's not bikes. That's why. I know. I need a motorbike now. Do you want to, uh, do you want to tell everybody exactly how you broke that arm? Uh, just doing a wheelie on my bike. Well, what, off. flipped it? No, slammed down and then <laughs> I had my arm just went up. Oh, oh my arm. And has that, has, has that affected your, your gaming skills at all? No, I've got my hand free. So, yeah. Aaron, who are you going to be racing as on the TT game? Uh, I was obviously on the Norton. So, as dad, yeah. Dude. Amazing. And how does it handle in the in the virtual world? Because it was renowned for uh, for being a bit of a handful in the real world. It was, on the turns, it's quite hard, to be fair. So, <laughs> going off what people say, I think it could be quite like reality. So, Raul, obviously, Aaron is the son of, of the, the famous one of, I'm, I've got to say, Aaron, he's, he was one of my heroes growing up. He was an absolute hero of mine. Uh, and I'm sure he was of, of many people, and especially you, Raul, as well. Yeah, definitely. Full respect. <laughs> All right, so without further ado, the clock of the course is called 10 seconds. Riders to the line. It's time to head over now to Dave Moore with Aaron's lap. So far then, we've had Kenny Lamb, Jamie Coward, Steffi Bow, and Rennie Skaysbrook. Next, on to Glen Country Road is Aaron Hislop, son of the legendary 11-time TT winner Steve Hislop. And Aaron has elected to tackle the TT course on his father's 1992 senior TT winning Norton. Already blasting down into the bottom of Bray Hill. Aaron still lives in the Isle of Man, just like his father did. Although Steve, originally from Scotland, made his home here. Just listen to that Norton snap, crackle, and pop its way around Quarterbridge. So Aaron certainly knows his way around the roads of the Isle of Man. The Norton of his lops back then, of course, overheating issues. They had to strip parts of the fairing away at the front to make sure that they could get air into the engine, keep it cool so it wouldn't overheat and blow. The Norton by that time, water cooled. Aaron just has to complete one lap today. Back then, Steve Hislop had to make it all the way to the end. Six laps in all. His lops, Norton, of course, the team run by Barry Simmons and operated on a shoestring budget. It was a miracle that they made it onto the Glen Crutchy Road for the start of either race. And that's why many regard the 1992 Senior TT as the greatest Isle of Man TT race of all time. So, Glen Helen then, and that's a good opening start, and Aaron just messes it up as he approaches or starts the climb up towards Sarah's Cottage. Well, Jamie Coward at 4.09. We had Aaron Hislop at 4.21. And that is the second fastest time so far. So he's 12 seconds outside Jamie Coward at this point. However, he did lose a few seconds with that little bump into the wall. So at Balaf, Aaron still has the second best split time behind Jamie Coward by 33 seconds. A split time of 7 minutes and 47 seconds. Heading back to the action now as Aaron is on the approach to Ramsey. So one little incident so far for Aaron Hislop. As he continues to push further north Oh dear, a little mistake. Just a little bit too close. Hit the curb up onto the wall, but on his way yet again. This is the Norton 588, of course. They used to be air-cooled when they first hit the roads, then the water-cooled version came along. So 
So at Ramsey, Aaron's time through the split was 11 minutes and 34 seconds, and at the Bungalow, 14 minutes and 42 seconds. Still the second best time behind Jamie Coward, back to the action. So down into Windy Corner. Just knock it back a gear, perhaps. No, yes, back in the fourth. And playing this with a broken arm, of course. So he certainly passed the medical somehow. And Aaron has over a minute in which to. Oh dear! It's costing him time again. But he should still record the second fastest time. Oh dear, oh dear, oh dear. Again, just that. Sometimes, after a little mistake, trying to make up for lost time by pushing just that little bit too hard. And further mistakes can often happen. However, Aaron has got this pin now. Down along Glen Crutchley Road. It's going to be the second quickest time we've seen so far. 18.12. 18 minutes and 12 seconds. I mean, a couple of crashes in there, Aaron, but... Uh, that bike did look uh, as twitchy uh, <laughs> in the virtual world as it did in the real world. Are you pretty happy with that time? Yeah, it's the best I could get on the bike, to be fair. Um, you think you could have gone fast on, on something a bit newer? Yeah, the other bikes are quicker, aren't they? Yeah, that did sound like it was it was bouncing off the rev limit at every chance it had down, <laughs> down in. Down right here. Hey, I, I'd definitely be happy with that. I'd take that one. Well done, mate. Yeah. Raul, what do you think to that lap? Are you uh, are you happy with your teammate? Yeah, it's, it's a very fast lap. We have to think that uh, he has pain in his arm, so maybe it's the lap time is <laughs> not the best one. <laughs> he has only the hand, you know, and sometimes you use all the arm, so it's good. And then we have to think that he's using a classic bike. It's it's not using a, a modern bike that... that uh, could be faster, so so it's wonderful that uh, with a 30 years old bike, do you know, he's uh, lapping in 18 and just a few seconds, uh, even with some crashes, it's lovely, it's wonderful, top job. Right, <laughs> it's time for now as we head over back to Dave Moore for Raoul's lap now. So Raoul Torres screaming along Glencroft Tree Road. He's following in the wheel tracks of teammate Aaron Hislop. Top of Bray Hill. The world just falls away until you hit the bottom, then over Agos Leap. Raul Torres Martinez on the Yamaha, which he's familiar with, having raced one at the Isle of Man TT. So around Quarterbridge. Raul Torres Martinez certainly knows his way around the circuit, having made his debut in the Manx Grand Prix. He then made his TT, or had his first TT ride as he goes into Braddon Bridge. Just a little bit too close to the fence for comfort, but anyway. On the Yamaha R1. Had a solid finish in the Superbike race in 2017. which he followed up in the senior TT. Raul, one of a number of Spanish riders to come back to the Isle of Man TT in recent years. A four minute split time for Raul at Glen Helen, the fastest split so far we've seen in this year's virtual TT. Nine seconds faster than Jamie Coward. We pick him back up as he heads in towards Kirk Michael. So the virtual TT, and it has to be said, so far, it's the riders who are, know, who are showing they know how to handle themselves virtually around the TT course than the gamers. A little bit of movement in the rear wheel. A lot of the riders will tell you, try and tr stay as upright as you can. Make a straight a line through Kurt Michael. Let the bends come out to you. 
but this is certainly working so far for Raul Torres. Kenny Lamb and Jamie Coward of Team Coward looked as if they were in pole position. But with Aaron Hislop going well on his lap and Raul Torres inside Jamie Coward, it could be Team Martinez favourites for the number one position. Long way to go, of course. So here we are at Bellar Bridge. Jamie Coward was 7 minutes 14. And it is 7 minutes and 3 seconds for Raul Torres. So he's 11 seconds. He's gained 2 seconds on Coward on the run from Glen Helen to Bellar. Eleven seconds up on Coward at Balaf, he stretched his lead. We pick Raul up on the bumpy section through Ramsey. Through Parliament Square. Really bumpy this little section at May Hill. To back off, but he's Oh dear, oh dear, it was going so well for Raul Torres. He's caught out, back on, but how much time has that cost him? Jamie Coward at Ramsey Hair Pin, 10.34. Oh, it's going to be close. The Spaniard should be inside, he should still be leading. And it is 10 minutes 28. So, the gap is down to six seconds. That's cost him five seconds, the run from Balaf. That crash earlier has closed things up at Kronk Namona with his lead down to four seconds. Can he do it? Back to Dave. He just has to get it home. And of course, it's the aggregate time counts. His lap and Raul Torres will have their times added together, just as Kenny Lamb and Jamie Coward. But I think we could be seeing Team Martinez in the number one position at the top of the team leaderboard. Certainly Torres Martinez <laughs> out to the foam fencing. Oh dear, oh dear. Now then, that's going to really throw things up in the air. Just seemed to lose concentration coming out. So the time that he has to beat, 16.37. Oh, it's going to be outside Jamie Coward. That's cost him. Oh, how close a second between them. 16.38, and that, again, was with a couple of crashes. I told you you couldn't miss Raul in, in those bright yellow uh, levers. <laughs> Raul, are you happy with your lap on that one? Yeah, I know, I'm quite happy. I have to say that this is not my fastest lap. My fastest lap is uh, 16.10 but it's not recorded. <laughs> I, I recorded many laps, but uh, at the end, my first lap uh, I did two days ago. Uh, so it's okay. That one, I did some mistakes. As you see, I crashed two, uh, three times. And when you crash, uh, you lost some focus. Then you want to recover it some time. And in, then the next corners, maybe you run wide and you are not using the proper lines. But I guess, guys, you want to know whereabouts you are on that leaderboard, right? Yeah. Okay. Right. Combined team time for Team Martinez of 34 minutes and 50 seconds. And that currently puts you in the lead. You're currently leading the virtual TT, boys. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> are, we nice. the, are we the first two to race? <laughs> yeah, Aaron, yeah, that's it. <laughs> no one else has yeah. <laughs> well, the race is truly hotting up now as Team Martinez have taken the lead in the virtual TT powered by Motul. But up next after the break is one of road racing's young, hottest prospects. It's Team Todd.
Welcome back to the Virtual TT powered by Motul. Team Martinez are now in the lead of the Virtual TT. Our next team is captained by a rider who a lot of people have tipped to go all the way at the TT. He was the winner of the 2018 RST Future Stars Award in his debut TT. He was expecting a full factory Honda ride this year at the TT. It is, of course, Davey Todd. And riding with Davey Todd... Todd only second here at the TT. Davey Todd, one of the hottest prospects in road racing currently. And I'm not saying it because he's here, but my tip for a future senior TT winner. Davey, welcome to the virtual TT. Now, we were just talking off air about potential rivals in this virtual TT. And you mentioned one person. Who was that? Uh, the first I mentioned was Jamie Coward. I'm uh, pretty confident he's pretty, uh, pretty fast, uh, both in real life and on the game. Right. I'm going to let you into a bit of a secret. He currently holds the individual lap record around here on the TT virtual TT game. So... Uh, does that make you more nervous or, or less nervous about your your lap? It makes me pretty nervous now. You know, he's. Um, I knew he was fast, uh, but I don't want to lose. So, <laughs> yeah, feeling the pressure now. Here's a question then: If I'm not saying you do, because I, I don't know the times of everybody else, but let's say you end up winning the virtual TT. Is this going to go down on your Wikipedia page as, as your first ever TT victory? To be honest, mate, I think it should count. You know, there's no TT this year. Um, I yeah. don't know. I guess it depends if I win or not, whether I want it to count. Mega, let's just touch on that, uh, the real world uh, of the Isle of Man. Obviously, you were supposed to be cocking your leg over a brand new factory Honda Fireblade. You must be uh, you must be gutted that the TT isn't taking place. Yeah, absolutely devastated, mate. You know, it's, um, it was a great opportunity for me this year. Um you know, a, a dream for me to race for for Honda and and get to ride factory machinery. And um, so far, we've only done a bit of testing for a couple of weeks, and uh, and then it's all been put on hold. So it's a real shame we didn't get to carry on this season. Um, you know, but um, hope for the best for the future, I guess. Davey, you might be in you might be in good company here because your teammate is a gamer from over on the Isle of Man. So hopefully he's going to have a lot of local knowledge. Let's bring in Sam now. Sam, uh, you you must have inadvertently lapped the TT course quite a quite a few times. Do you think your local knowledge is going to give you an advantage? Oh, I hope so. Uh, when you say inadvertently lapped, it's not quite 120 plus mile an hour though. So. Learning the course at that sort of speed is completely different. Um, I have cycled it though. There's a cycling challenge on the island. So I'm hoping that doing that uh, a couple of years back helped me out on the game as well. So you are a bit of a gamer as well. You were saying earlier that you uh, you play various different games, not necessarily motorcycle racing games. So has it taken a while to adapt to this and actually learn the course and learn the speeds? That was the biggest thing. You know, the, the controls and things are, are pretty simple. It's the course knowledge. I played the previous games with the racing line on, uh, cheats mode, I suppose. Uh, so when you turn that off, there's a bit like a rabbit in the headlights on the start line. But you know, once you've been around a few times, combined with the fact that I, I know it, you know, sort of myself. Uh, hopefully, I've managed to put a decent time in for uh, for Davy. Hey, Davy, have you got any last minute tips for uh, for Sam before he gets his lap underway? To be honest, he's probably got more tips than me. I guess he knows the course pretty well and um, knows how to play games. So it's um, crash as little as possible, which I always struggle with. But um, I guess that's the name of the game with a with a fast lap. All right, then, Sam, it's time to stop talking and get on with the action. As Sam heads to the start line, we're going to head over to Dave Moore with all the action. Sam Tipper. In the colours of James Hillier on the Kawasaki ZX-10. On his way. So this is Sam riding for Team Todd. 
his wider teammate, Davy Todd, of course. And this is, you could say, a brave move from Sam Tipper, electing to go for the superbike, but so far, so good. The superbike, obviously, much more difficult to handle than the smaller 600s that we've seen so far. But I think Sam Tipper knows what he's doing, my goodness. He is on a charge. This could be the fastest time we've seen so far. Long, long way to go, of course. But Davy Todd will be pleased to watch this as Sam Tipper tips it in. The left and right of Braddon Bridge. Takes a minute, as I've mentioned with the others, to get to Union Mills. Sam Tipper's just about there as well. And this is certainly going to be up there with the likes of Raul Torres and Jamie Coward. Very fast in a Balacrane. Oh, and manages to save it. I really thought he'd overcooked it then. And it may just knock him back a little bit. A little bit of a warning there. You can get caught out. He might just have a little bit more of a cautious approach now. Certainly this is the tight and twisting section up to Kronkivodi. And this is where perhaps the ZX-10 will lose out to the 600s, perhaps. Because it's harder to control, he's going to really have to ease off now. He can't use the top-end speed of the ZX-10. Laurel Bank, can, another one of those corners that can suck you in. Just having to back it off for each turn. But this is a good time. This is going to be a very good time. It may not be inside Raul Torres Martinez, but it will be inside Jamie Coward. Oh my goodness, 402, two seconds outside Raul Martinez and seven seconds ahead of Jamie C Coward. So, into second place goes Sam Tipper, the fastest gamer we've had so far. Sam is 18 seconds down on leader Martinez at the Ramsey hairpin and he's in third place overall. But Sam Tipper certainly with the third fastest time so far. He's a good deal ahead of Kenny Lamb who is the second quickest gamer at this point so far. But there's a good minute or so, minute and a half between them. So Sam Tipper perhaps may not be able to beat Raul Torres Martinez of Team Martinez, but he perhaps could console himself with the fastest rider time. And also, as I say, depending on how Davy Todd does, could end up as overall team winners. into the bungalow again good exit speed just about a cronk Namona, he's only five seconds behind jamie coward can he take second place back to dave if he can just negotiate he might be able to make a second or two and we saw certainly raul torres martinez make some mistakes through here that ultimately pushed him back to second place. Jamie Coward with the fastest time, 16.37. Raul Torres Martinez, 16.38. But I don't think Sam Tipper is going to even split those two riders as he comes out. He certainly won't. He looks like he's going to be in the 1640s. Here he is. So that's Coward's time. That's Torres' time. But it will be the third quickest time we've seen so far. It's 16.45. Davey, uh, blooming hell, 16 minutes, 45 seconds. Davey, are you slightly worried that your job might be in jeopardy now? <laughs> I was playing. <laughs> Def definitely. Um, you know, he's, he said he's played the game for a couple of weeks or something. He's already that quick. That's uh, it's pretty impressive. I'd say I've put hundreds of, hundreds of hours in a damn sight, more, a lot more laps uh, in than he has. So I should be a lot quicker than that. <laughs> 
Lovely, no, that's amazing. Sam, you must be uh, you must be pretty happy that you've made David smile. Yeah, I mean, hopefully it's it's done enough. I'm not sure what Davy's time is yet, so I'll judge myself on what Davy's going round in. But no, thanks. Uh, yeah, it's been a challenge living it in such a short amount of time. So I'm glad you uh, yeah. at least have a smile anyway. But let's see just how well a factory rider can go around the TT course. Davy, it's over to you as we head back to Dave Moore. Oh, we're about to witness the fastest recorded lap of the virtual TT powered by Mokul. Here comes Davy Todd then. Start the clock. And just listen to that superbike scream. He's riding in the David Johnson colours on the Honda. Over Rago's leap. And Davy Todd riding for Team Todd. His gamer buddy is Sam Tipper. Oh, Davy Todd, a little bit hot. Not as smooth around Quarterbridge as his teammate Sam Tipper, the gamer. However, we are looking at perhaps the favourite here. Davy Todd, which we'll talk about in a moment, long associated with this game. And this is going to be, it looks as if it's going to be the quickest time to Union Mills. He's certainly a couple of seconds up on the likes of Sam Tipper already. Davy Todd is showing what a top TT rider can do with a blistering split at Balaf. Six minutes and 41 seconds, that's 22 seconds quicker than Martinez. The next timing point is at Balaf Bridge. That 13 second lead is now extended to 22 seconds. So a 22 second lead from Davy Todd and I think we are witnessing what will be the fastest lap of the virtual TT powered by Motul. We've still got quite a few more riders to come of course. But this is, as I said, the man who was second in the world at one stage. Through quarry bends. And we'll soon see the top speed as they hit Solby straight. Here we go. 190. Will he hit the 200 mark? Limits out at 194 by the looks of things, yep. But it's a fair bet that he's going to increase his lead sector upon sector. So heading out onto the mountain, Davy is looking very good indeed. My goodness me, 9 minute 46 for Davy Todd. So 42 seconds ahead of Raul Torres Martinez. And also as well, you've got to be around the 10 minute 40 mark for 135 mile an hour lap. That's a minute quicker. So this is some going from Davy Todd as he's through tower bends, you can see course knowledge working well. A few of the other riders have found tower bends quite tricky. Not this man. Down into first gear now, up through the gearbox as he starts to rise up from the gooseneck toward the mountain. And this is firmly going to put Team Todd in the number one position for sure. We pick back up with David Todd's awesome lap on the approach to the bungalow. As he stretched his lead. This 
is almost the perfect lap from Davy Todd. He's going to be very, very happy if he can continue this all the way to the chequered flag. And Davy Todd has a 54 second lead over Raul Torres, who is a further eight seconds ahead of Jamie Coward. So 12 minutes 26 for Davy Todd. Oh my goodness me! He's off at Hellwood's height. So a rare mistake from Davy Todd. Down into Hillbury. Knocks it back again, does he? Yep. Oh dear, oh dear. A third mistake from Davy Todd. On his way once more. But it, a lot of the riders have found the Nook and the Governor's Dip quite tricky. And I think Davy Todd should be quite good through there. A little moment at signpost. Into Bedstead. Keeps away from Hutchinson's pavement. Oh. So then, Davy Todd will record a very good individual time, but it will also, it looks as if it will put Team Todd in the number one position overall. It certainly will. So here comes Davy Todd with the fastest lap so far. 15.44. That'll do. Davy. Under 16 minutes. I'm going to tell you now, that is faster than Jamie Coward's lap. How do you feel about that one? <laughs> and that's good news. That's all I wanted to hear, <laughs> to be honest. <laughs> I only scraped by just beating him in the senior last year, so I'm glad I've managed to keep on top of that one. Sam, what do you think to that lap by Davey? Pretty hot, eh? Oh, it's rapid. Absolutely rapid, <laughs> isn't it? Yeah, oh, fair play. That's it. About a minute quicker than mine, uh, with some crashes in as well. So, I think I could learn a thing or two uh, watching your lap back. So, with two rapid times from both the gamer and the rider, as you would expect, Team Todd have taken the lead with a team time of 32 minutes and 29 seconds, two minutes and 21 seconds faster than second place Team Martinez. Boys, you must be happy with that. Oh, over the moon. I think we've got this in the bag now. I'm uh... <laughs> I'm hoping for the best, I guess. David Get Wallen that Wikipedia David. page updated. What a day's racing. The lead changed twice. First off, with Team Martinez setting a blisteringly fast time. It didn't look like it was going to be beatable, but then rocked up Team Todd and two very consistent riders in David Todd and Sam. They're now current leaders of the virtual TT with a time of 32 minutes and 29 seconds. And also David Todd now holds the individual lap record, 15 minutes and 49 seconds. But like we've seen today, anything can happen. Our next team competitors are Team Toynuti and also Team Cummins. And let's see how they do on the virtual TT powered by Motul. Join us next time.
told you the race in action was going to be hot. I told you it was going to be fierce. Davy Todd set in a blistering time in the virtual TT. Unbelievable. 15.44. That'll do. But we've still got plenty of action coming up this week. And tomorrow we have another TT lock in live. C Player and myself are going to be talking to Peter Hickman. And in the Ultimate TT Races presented by Bennett, we're heading back to 2018 and that epic battle. Dean Harrison into Glen Helen. He's the fastest rider so far. And we take a look back at one of our favourite TT documentaries. And I'll join you back here again tomorrow night for more TT Lock-In, fuelled by Monster Energy.